Hey, what is going on, guys? In this video today, we're gonna be doing a breakdown of the most underrated controller Fortnite player in the game right now, Wavy Jacob. If you follow competitive Fortnite at all, you may have heard about Jacob's insane performance in the recent round of Cash Cups. He came in first place two days in a row, and on the first day, he won by probably the widest margin I've ever seen in a competitive event. He was in first place with 120 points and 87 total kills, while second place was only 79 points. That means he averaged just under 9 kills per match, which is absolutely absurd, and it also means that he would have won that cash cup with only his elimination points. I feel like the only reason he doesn't usually get mentioned as a top 3 to 5 controller player in the world is because he plays on NA West instead of East or EU. So without further ado, let's get right into going over what Jacob does to be so successful. Alright, so one of the things that you need to know about Jacob right off the bat, because it's really important to his playstyle, is that he uses legacy aim assist and settings. But the way he utilizes legacy aim assist is actually quite different than what you typically see from other top controller players. What people automatically think of when the term legacy aim assist gets mentioned is basically someone just lasering everybody at medium range with an AR by spamming L2 over and over again. They probably envision a player almost exactly like Unknown Army, who Jacob actually gets compared to a lot. And sure, does he spam L2 with his AR and get some nasty lasers from time to time? Absolutely. But where he really shines as a player is in close range fights. I honestly think he has the best controller shotgun aim in the game right now, and here's a quick little sample of that in action from the Cash Cops. Homie really wanted that llama. Well, obviously, three clips on their own aren't really enough to prove anything, but trust me, I've never seen another controller player hit so many pump headshots for 180 plus damage. And it's kind of hard to tell when you're just watching him play at full speed, but one of the ways he takes advantage of Legacy in these shotgun fights is by tapping L2 before firing his pump. That's something that a lot of people are comfortable doing with the fast fire rate shotguns like the TAC, but it's also really effective with the pump as well. But in my opinion, the single most interesting thing about Jacob's shotgun usage is a little trick he does that I've never really seen before. So as I was watching him stream these cash cups, one thing I noticed is that he almost always opted to carry an RPG over an SMG, so his ideal setup with his inventory was basically AR, pump, RPG, double healing. And I found that a little odd, because that's typically something players can do with a tack shotgun because it has a high fire rate, but with the pump you'll almost always see players pairing it with an SMG as kind of that follow up weapon. Also, he would always put the RPG in his third inventory slot, which I also found kinda weird. Most people will put it next to their AR, so when shooting the RPG at a 1 by one they'll press one button to immediately switch to their AR and try to spray down a wall so that maybe the rocket can sneak through. But as I watched him play more and more, I quickly started to realize the reason why he always picks up that RPG and also why he puts it next to his shotgun. Here's a quick little sequence of short clips that show exactly the reasoning behind it. Thank you. 
So that right there is a trick that, again, I honestly don't think I've really seen any other players do before Jacob. He'll locate the general area of where the enemy is inside the structure, then he shoots his RPG, presses one button to switch to his pump, and then as soon as the RPG hits the wall, he presses L2 to get that legacy lock on that everybody always talks about, and then he fires the shot. It's honestly one of the most genius things I've ever seen, because if you execute it properly, it's literally impossible to defend against. I love to see it from the perspective of the enemy, because they're gonna hear the rocket, have their building menu out ready to replace the wall that's about to get destroyed, but then before they can do that, Jacob sneaks an easy pump shot right through. And then what would happen so many times after he did that is the enemy would be disoriented, trying to figure out what happened, worrying about it happening again, trying to branch out so that they can safely heal, and then he'd use all that confusion to play aggressive and finish the enemy off. That RPG shotgun trick is definitely something that I'm going to try to implement into my game going forward, and I recommend you guys do the same thing, especially if you're a legacy player. But during the times where Jacob hasn't found an RPG yet, since they're obviously kinda rare, he's also very good at abusing aim assist with the SMGs in the game, which is something I've talked about that's really important for controller players. Since he's on Legacy, you'll see more L2 spamming than barrel stuffing, which is more of a linear thing, and here's some quick examples of what I mean by that. Let me out of there! Thank you. Now, as I alluded to earlier, much like almost all the other top controller players out there, Jacob's entire playstyle revolves around taking fights that a lot of players would try to avoid. I mean, you simply can't get 87 kills in 10 high-level competitive games unless you play like a psychopath, pretty much. Here's just one of many examples that kind of showcases the mindset that he plays with. Why did this kid stop building? Like, what? I go, why you not throwing me out this box, G? Now, to be fair, even though that was a high point lobby, that enemy did not play that situation well at all. But regardless of how it happened after, it looked at the very beginning of the fight like the enemy was going to have high ground super easily. So what the majority of players would probably do there is box up, take the fight slow, and wait for the enemy to hopefully make a mistake. But that simply isn't the way Jacob plays. His plan there was to keep pushing forward and going on the offensive no matter what the enemy actually did. And to some people, that may make him seem like this low IQ player who just pushes because he has a short attention span or something, but he's talked on stream before about why he believes in his playstyle, and it's a really interesting explanation. He basically says that as long as he can deal a solid amount of damage at the very beginning of a fight, it's going to make his opponent scared, and they're going to be more focused on staying alive than actually killing him. So that allows him to push in certain ways that the enemy usually wouldn't let happen because they'd be applying pressure back. Now, one of the common misconceptions about this type of playstyle is basically, oh, when you play super aggressive, yeah, it works against bad or average players, but when you run into the really good players, they're going to know how to deal with it, and they're going to destroy you. I guess I can kind of see the logic behind that argument, but I also don't think it's true at all. And to prove it, I'm going to show you guys two different clips from the same cash cup of Jacob using his typical push everything playstyle and killing Tifu. That was a hard hit. I ain't gonna cap to you, my dog. Shit on Tifu! Come on! So as you can see, that playstyle can be a problem for even pro-level players. In both those clips, Tifu probably thought there was no chance he was going to get pushed that quickly, and it resulted in him getting taken by surprise and losing the fight both times. 
So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you watched the entire thing, be sure to let me know with a comment down in the comment section below. I personally believe it's Jacob, but who do you believe is the most underrated controller player in the game right now? Be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications, do whatever the heck you want, and I will catch you guys next time.